In this video, we will be building a double gable roof for our large building. The building is 30 foot wide, 60 foot long. And this video is part of a series. You will have a link to that series at the end of the video or in the video description box. And in this video, we are going to move our beams in a little bit and build a shaped rake wall with one framing plate, two framing plates down here. And you can go ahead and use two plates here. I'm using one to provide you with another example of how you could build something like this. And we're going to use a larger door here than the previous video. This door is about 13 foot wide and it's about 10 foot tall. And we're going to have a couple of posts for the beams to sit on. And let's go ahead and remove some of the background so that you can get a better view of the front wall. And don't forget that mid-span blocks are usually required for two by four framing if the wall studs are longer than 10 foot. And we're going to have one two by four in the center here to support the ridge. And you might consider blocking this area also, along with double Double trimmers supporting our door header and of course the right side of the wall will be framed the same way as the left side and you can always use a single framing plate here let's go ahead and install our beams with our posts and don't forget I will not be able to provide you with lumber sizes for your specific project so here we have a post to beam hanger Get us another view of it there. Next up, let's take a look at the post to foundation connector. And I like to have my connectors a little bit off of the concrete or have the top of the concrete even with the bottom of the post base connector. Next up, let's take a view from the top here. I believe our beams are about five foot away from the outside wall. And I think the pitch of the roof is a 10 and 12 at the top and a 4 and 12 at the bottom. And don't forget that you can change your roof pitches to match your building if you want a different design. And then let's go ahead and install the lower rafters and the upper rafters along with our lookouts here and our fascia board. Next up, let's go ahead and head to the front of the building here here to get another view of how the fascia board is going to connect to the lookouts. And then in this example, we are going to have the ridge extending out to pick up the fascia board. Then let's head back down to the lower section. You can see the lookouts and how they are positioned here. We have this lookout here supporting this side of the fascia board and this one here, of course, supporting this side. And then we just have one block here. You can see here where we have two blocks. And these blocks will be shaped for the sheathing. So the top of this block here will match the top of the slope here for this rafter. And this block here will match the slope of the upper rafter. And we're also going to extend the lower rafter so that we can get a little more nailing and a stronger connection there between the rafters. So here you can see how the sloped blocks are working. I'm really not worried about the gaps here. However, if you are, you can simply extend the blocks over a little further to eliminate that gap. And make sure that you nail these blocks together because you will be nailing the lower sheathing into this block, the upper sheathing into this one. And as I mentioned a little earlier, this will be a single block because this lookout right here is in the way. You can always move the lookout to have two blocks there. Just kind of go around so that you can get an idea how this rafter is coming down. This one can come down a little further, or you could always stop it even with the face of this side of the beam. And then that would allow you to run the block past here if you're going to have enough nailing for the lap between the lower rafter and the upper rafter up here. If not, you're going to get a little more nailing down here. You're gonna be able to put a few more nails in here to create a stronger connection. Another view of the blocking there, along with how the rafters will be sitting on top of the beams. Let's go ahead and swing around, give you a view of this here. What I was talking about here was just simply cutting this off here cutting this section off here, coming straight up here. And then you could simply extend the block over to this rafter here to get rid of this gap if you wanted to. So not too difficult there. Another view of how we're gonna be lapping over here, plenty of nailing here. And I'll leave it up to you 
whether or not you want to do this or stop the rafter back a little bit further. But I think we got a nice connection there. And of course, the single framing plate here with our wall framing studs and the backside of the fascia there. A view of the miter joint here where the two pieces of fascia join together and how the beam might set in the wall and connect to the rafters. And something like this, you could always run a strap through here and strap the rafters together if you need a stronger connection. A view of the lookout there. Next up, let's take a look at our rafter spacing, which is going to be 24 inches on center. All the way across, your rafters might need to be spaced a little closer together. I would recommend installing mid-span blocks on this span here, because I believe this is about 13 feet. And then let's go ahead and install our rafter ties, collar ties, and some support braces. And you might be able to get away with one support brace in the center and even 2x4 rafter ties. Here I have 2x4 braces and 2x6 rafter ties. And I believe these rafter ties are about 20 foot long. And in our example here, you can simply nail these support braces to the rafter and to the rafter ties with a few 16D nails. Let's go ahead and take the rafters away so that we can take a look at the blocking, the support braces, collar ties, and again the rafter ties, which will be connecting the rafters on both sides along with the support beams to prevent them from moving because the pressure from the center section of the roof framing could force each of these sides to spread apart. And hopefully that will not happen with your rafter ties. Collar ties will be connecting each side of the roof rafter. Collar ties are usually going to prevent the top of the roof from spreading apart if there is uplift. And I believe I have videos on that at our website if you need a little more information. And of course, you could always joist this area and create a floor in a building like this. Another view of this side of the wall. And again, this side of the wall here will be the same as the other side. We're going to have solid blocking. You might need holes drilled in these blocks if you need ventilation in the building or additional ventilation in the building. A view from underneath where you can see how the roof sheathing is going to create a nice finished area underneath here that can be painted. Another view of this section here behind the fascia board. And if you don't like the way this looks right here, make sure that you put two lookouts together so that you can hide that section of the framing. And next up, let's take a look at how the sheathing is going to connect to our blocks. So the top section of the sheathing will nail into these blocks and roof rafters along with this section right here. You're going to be able to nail this sheathing here into the blocks. And this might not be a requirement on your project. So I will leave it up to you as to whether or not you want to put these blocks in and get the additional structural support. Otherwise, with two foot on centers, you could have some weak spots here, but you would also have some weak spots in between the rafters, especially when you get closer to the center here. And of course, if you could imagine not having these blocks here, this could be a weak area here. Another thing you could always use would be plywood clips. These are pieces of hardware that will be installed in between your plywood sheathings. So they would be visible from above and below. They'd be located in the center of the area between the rafters to provide you with a little more structural stability for the roof sheathing. So there we have it. A double gable roof and of course this suggestion was made by one of our viewers who wanted a little more information on how you could build something like this so if you have any ideas for videos feel free to leave them in the comment area along with any questions you might have about this design or the construction of a project like this one